A blessed day learners. I'm teacher Lumaban, and I will be your guide in this video. If you are new in my channel, don't forget to subscribe, and hit the notification bell, to be updated in my videos. This time our topic is the, review notes in criminal sociology, ethics and human relations, part 8, hostage situation. Be ready as we start, learn and enjoy our topic for today. Be safe, and God bless you always. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Psalm 37 verse 5 Hostage Situation This is termed as crisis by the law enforcement officers and behavioral professionals. This situation exists when one or more individuals are held captive by other person or persons against their will for purposes of demanding material things or due to behavioral maladies. Criminal type hostage takers may direct their demand towards the government or to other private individuals. Mentally or emotionally disturbed may take hostages out of nothing or due to uncontrollable forces. In dealing with hostage situations, the priorities are to 1. Preserve lives, 2. Apprehend the captors, and 3. Recover or protect properties. Negotiators should be prepared for this kind of situation since it will take them a long period of time to contain the situation. According to experts, a hostage taking may last for an hour to more than 40 hours. Hostage takers and hostages and even the negotiators become tired and stressed out of the long period of crisis intervention. Hostages become impatient waiting for their safe release or rescue. With this, there is a great possibility of the birth of the Stockholm Syndrome. This is characterized by transference of attention between the captors and captives. The hostage towards his captors may generate positive feelings. Negotiators can have enough time to contain and isolate the scene. The initial state of high emotion is given time to subside and rational thinking to return. The lives of the hostages become more secure as the holder realizes the value of their continued safety, and fatigue will set in and alertness will fade. It was researched by experts that passage of time is in favor of the hostages and to the negotiators. In the first hour of the situation, the hostage taker is at rage and tension is at peak. As time passes mental, emotional, and physical fatigue will be increased and will operate against the hostage taker. As this happen, the above enumerated benefits of slowing time operate. Stages of a hostage situation Alarm stage, this stage is the most traumatic and dangerous. In the alarm stage, the emotion of the hostage taker is exceedingly in its highest peak, his rationalization and proper thinking is low, he may be extremely aggressive in his reaction to any perceived threat. E.g. escape of hostages, tactical assault, trickery etc. In order for the perpetrator gain cooperation from the hostages, he usually terrorizes the hostages into submission. At this stage he may also incline to inflict physical harm or even kill anyone who interferes with their attempts. Strance, 1984, p. 190. The same is the situation in the part of the hostages. Since no one knows when or does not want that they will be held hostages. This is considered as a traumatic stage as they fear much for their lives. From a peaceful situation, turns into a life and death situation ticking every minute and the lives of the hostages depend on the hand of the hostage taker. Herman, 1995, p. 92. A person taken as hostage becomes impatient, denial of reality sets in them, particularly when those they expect to help seem to be doing nothing. In order to cope immediately with this agitated feeling, one must put into place a will to survive since panic may cause overreaction in the part of the hostage taker and diminishes the chances of survival. It is also important that hostages should disregard any notion of being a hero. Strance, 1984, p. 196. Crisis stage, in this stage, when negotiation attempts are being initiated by the crisis negotiator. 
outrageous demands and unpredictable emotion is marked or commonly noted in the hostage taker. There is still a great deal of danger since hostage takers try to consolidate their positions. To do these, they try to move their hostages to a safer ground area. On the part of the captive, this is the most critical because the stage may predict the remainder of the situation. Chances of survival may be enhanced or reduced during this stage through the hostage-hostage-taker interaction. It is advisable that hostages must control their fear as it increases unpredictable outburst of anger and violence on the captor. The hostage-taker may inconsistently enforce numerous demands and petty rules and this may result to unsuccessful negotiation. In addition, the perpetrator seeks to destroy the victim's sense of autonomy by depriving him of his basic needs. At this stage hostages may start to feel three problems, 1, isolation, 2, claustrophobia, and 3, sense of time. Sense of time becomes important on hostages who are hoping for rescue. This situation may also in favor of the hostage taker as they earn compliance from their captives. Accommodation stage, this is distinguished by boredom, and with moments of terror though is considered as the longest yet is the most tranquil. In the crisis stage, and even in the alarm stage, hostages are considering escape options but in the accommodation stage, their initiative and planning are narrowed since captors has increased control over them. The hostages sense of life preserving has increased and even tries to obey the orders. Stockholm syndrome will likely to occur between the captors and the victims. One looks into this phenomenon in the negative that one must say that cooperation of hostages to the negotiator is constricted. In the right manner, the hostages in good effect can make use of this phenomenon. It lessens tension and openness is generated. It is advisable that hostages must avoid political discussions as it accentuates differences with captors and hostages. Myron and Goldstein Resolution Stage this is the stage when the hostage taker is being stressed out or fatigued of the situation. He is seemingly losing interest of the situation and lost most of his bargaining points. Tension between the hostages, hostage taker and the crisis negotiator is notably low. It should be regarded also that the crisis intervention techniques of the negotiation team have increased. In this stage, reactions of the hostages are mixed either blaming their captors or may become hostile and uncooperative to their rescuers and even accusing them to be the responsible for the whole situation. They might even appraise their captors for taking care, saving, their lives though their captors placed them into a hell experience. Released victims become paranoid and often experience post-trauma attacks after liberation. These may even last for a long period of time. Such experience becomes part of their lives and haunts them from time to time if not being properly treated. They, being a paranoid, continue to monitor their captors if taken away from them or safely put behind bars. The Hostage Taker It is a must that a police officer who first arrived at the scene has the necessary skill to determine what type or personality of the hostage taker is. This does not mean that he must diagnose the perpetrator. In assessing the situation, one must be able to determine and know the two kinds of behavior. Instrumental behavior Those who are engaging in this kind of behavior are having goals to obtain or to be fulfilled. Generally, hostage takers of instrumental behavior are criminal types and intervention usually needs bargaining. E.g. barricaded criminals, or other organized crime groups. Expressive behavior This kind of behavior is characterized by their attempt to display power. Those who engage in this kind are emotionally disturbed individuals. E.g. mentally insane, etc. In many hostage situations committed, statistics reveals that most of those involved are mentally disturbed individuals and the remaining are results of instrumental behaviors. According to research, 25% of all hostage situations are instigated by expressive acts. With this data, it is important that we must learn the different types of hostage takers and we will begin with the emotional aspect. Mentally disturbed. This group suffers from different kinds of psychological maladies. They may or may not in touch with reality. A mentally disturbed individual may be a loner, act in accordance with a non-existing irresistible force, or on a false belief or a stimuli, Cooper, 
1981. Symptoms may include such things as dramatic and sudden changes of behavior, loss of memory, mistreatment of a loved one, a sudden, impulsive act of theft, extreme depression, or anxiety that is out of proportion to the circumstances that appear to be causing the anxiety. The individual may talk to himself of hear voices, or he may be displaying dangerous behavior without any apparent reason. Mentally or emotionally disturbed individual may be in a very docile mood for a while and become extremely violent without any apparent cause, Adams. A patrol officer is usually the first person to respond to a crisis situation before the crisis team arrives. In some instances where crisis management teams, CMT, are not available, he usually starts and event finalizes the job. Police officers are empowered to bring the mentally and emotionally disturbed individuals to the psychiatrist for evaluation and treatment. Paranoid Schizophrenics To begin with the different kinds of mental disorder, we must first understand the different topics associated with this. Below are items of information discussed in the Book of Adams that serve as a guide to a police officer who will respond to a hostage situation involving mentally disturbed. Psychosis is a gross and persistent falsification of conventional reality that leaves the person unable to manage conventional reality with any degree of effectiveness. Psychosis has two major components. Delusion is the faulty belief that is motivated primarily by the individual's needs and wishes and in fact, has no basis. Hallucination is manifested in a visual image that is quite vivid and real to the individual who experiences it. Paranoia is a set of fixed delusional beliefs that are accompanied by clear and orderly thinking outside the delusion system. Paranoia manifests itself. A paranoid has been described as vigilant suspicious, distrustful, insecure, and chronically anxious. There are two types of a paranoid individual as the true paranoid or the classical paranoid as psychologists prefer, may be of high level of intelligence and so persuasive that he will successfully recruit other persons to help him in his war against enemy. Individual with paranoid reaction do not handle the problem in as much logic or intelligence as the true paranoid. Schizophrenia is a thinking disorder. Expert says that, approximately 80% of the mentally ill of the population are schizophrenic. There are subcategories of this kind of mental disorder, the catatonic state and the hebephrenic state. Catatonic state is demonstrated by the patient's rigidly held position for some interminable period of time, while hebephrenic state is when the subject acts childlike and silly. The signs and symptoms of the schizophrenic condition may appear in three different ways such as the following. 1. The subject's language may be rambling and tangential, he may make up meaningless rhymes, or echo anything he hears. 2. The subject may show his split personality incongruent between his expressed ideas and emotional responses. This indicates that two thought operate simultaneously. 3. The subject may isolate or alienate himself from the rest of the society and pull himself into his personal shell, schizotype personality. Neurosis is suffered by a person if most likely to be observed in a continuous state of anxiety. Erratic behavior would more than likely be displayed by reaction to anxiety in the form of ego defense mechanisms such as rationalization, projection, or displacement. The signs and symptoms are shaking uncontrollably and depression without explanation. In general, they are characterized by being out of touch with reality and being recognized by their false belief. Hostage taking is done in order for them to carry out plans from someone who compels them to do. Their routine is to accomplish something but there is no accomplishment. Most of the paranoid schizophrenics are in conflict and with difficulty in coping even in a minimal stress situation. Male paranoid may have problems with gender identity and religious beliefs. It is so noted that frustration and conflict is involved. When these two combines, severe anxiety will surface that makes a person so sensitive and volatile. Lack of interpersonal trust religious conviction, sexual dysfunction, persecutory beliefs about family or significant individuals or even distrust to the negotiator or police may lie in the person's behavior. This variety of issues may cause the negotiation difficult and dangerous, 1986. The first thing a negotiator should do is to keep the dialogue at an even pace. 
Since paranoid schizophrenics are out of touch with reality, it is a must that the hostage taker should be kept calm enough to stay in touch with reality while the negotiation process is going on. A good negotiation strategy is suggested below. 1. Reduce anxiety at the same time create a problem-solving atmosphere. 2. Do not trick the captor. 3. Accept the statement as true but do not agree. 4. Do not convince that he is wrong. 5. Emphatic understanding is needed. Manic Depressive Personality Depressed individuals are in an incapacitated mental state. He may frequently know the hostages and the latter might be the cause of his depression. Negative outlook in life, feeling unworthy, slow speech, suicidal and unpredictable and extremely dangerous are the characteristics of this type of mentally disturbed. To a one who is a suicidal type, he might inflict harm or even kill one of the hostages and the police will be forced to shoot him, Strance, 1984. When dealing with this kind of mentally disturbed hostage taker, the negotiator must be 1. Firm and manipulative. 2. Understanding and be supportive. 3. Able to induce subject to talk about something positive. Inadequate personality. This is a type of person that displays attention-seeking behavior. Hostage taking is his action to prove himself or his worth. During the commission of the crime, he tends to delay his actions and be caught in flagranti in order for him to prove himself, I'll show them. His characteristics are homicidal, loser complex, may be fired from many jobs and is in touch with reality. Though they are emotionally disturbed, yet they are apologetic to their behavior, I'm sorry but I have to do this to prove that I can be a good worker. The negotiator should be aware that those statements mean that it's either murder or physical harm to the hostages. It is but wise to present problem-solving alternatives so that the hostage taker will not feel that he has failed again. The person needs acceptance and understanding. An initial action is to offer promises that can be kept and do not allow relatives in the scene. Antisocial personality those who belong to this kind of personality are repeatedly having conflict with the people around them and notably having a deviant behavior from groups, social values, and or individuals. They defend their face from embarrassment by blaming others in the form or rationalization. Antisocials, when takes hostages, are generally engages in expressive acts and they are likely to dehumanize the hostages and this is an indication that they are dangerous individuals. According to Lansley, Antisocial individuals did not internalize moral values yet they know the consequences of their acts and they are therefore considered or more likely to become a foe. These hostage takers are only concerned for themselves indicating egotism. Though they are aware of the consequences of their acts, they feel no remorse and the negotiator must be aware of this. At any time the hostage taker may consider his hostages as burden and might harm or even end killing his hostages. A guideline of action suggested is that the ego of the hostage taker is stimulated. In this situation, the stimulus of this situation might be the hostages and the negotiator must diverse the attention away from them. It is also suggested that it is but wise not to refer or talk about hospitalization or treatment during the crisis intervention as this might agitate the perpetrator if they believe they might lose their freedom or is insinuated that they are crazy. Since the hostage taker is a street and police wise, it is advisable not to use trickery, Fusilier, 1981. The estranged person. Domestic problem is the main cause why an estranged individual takes hostages. The hostages are commonly known to him and mostly are his family members. The hostage taker is experiencing from relationship breakdown in his or her interpersonal relationships and hostage taking is employed to compel the relationship to be maintained. The hostage taker at his point is afraid of losing the significant others. In order to carry out hostage taking, alcohol and prohibited drugs are used to have the necessary courage, Cooper, pages 27 to 28. Knowledge in domestic intervention is essential when dealing with this kind of volatile situation. The negotiator should be careful when intervening on personal disputes as oral arguments between the hostage and the hostage taker may occur. The negotiator must be an emphatic listener and with good responding skill. He must also be aware of the personal nature if the situation 
the negotiator should also have the ability to bar the denial of reality into despair. The resolution is that the perpetrator needs to be shown a graceful way out, Cooper, 1981. Terrorists Terrorism throughout the world has been alarming for the past decades and even at present. Countries around the world have been facing terrorism problems either local or international groups. In the United States alone, it has been reported that there are local terrorists sowing fear, insecurity, and unrest amongst the people. They create chaos through assassinations, bombing, arson, and other forms of malicious destruction of properties. CMD, AFP slash PNP Though global terrorism is seemingly increasing and alarming, the international law enforcement community is trying its best to address to this kind of problem. The international police organizations, other law enforcement, religious and civic organizations team up together in fighting these terrorists. Regardless of their cause, their terroristic activities are condoned by most of the people. Characteristics, modus operandi, and causes. In order for them to attain their goal, careful planning is involved. They employ professional members Most of the planning team members are educated enough on political matters to outweet and deceive the authorities. They also employ undercover agents and divide into groups. Hostages are in serious jeopardy when their demands are not met immediately or if the military pressure hovers them, i.e. deployment of troops, hovering choppers. The local police may not be able to meet the demands immediately and only serve as perimeter security as they need government attention. They use media to get attention from the government. Since most of the longest-running crisis situation involves political terrorists, they want to negotiate directly to the government and pay less attention to the agents or crisis management teams. Terrorists also try to let the government overreact and the situation so when worse come, they, the hostages and the rights groups will turn ire and blames on the government. The common question asked is what causes them to do such. Evidently, hostage taking is their means to get the much needed attention from the government or private individuals just like other types of hostage takers. In this way, the authorities will initiate actions to negotiate for the safe release of the hostages on the fear that the latter will end killed or harmed. On the issue on ransom, according to them are just demanded to cover their expenses while hostages are at their custody, but in sense, will serve as their resources to buy additional firepower or in the recruitment for additional manpower in preparation for the anticipated military or police pressures. Just like other types of hostage takers, they need to be negotiated with. The only difference is that a mentally deranged, inadequate and antisocial personalities needs more the help of mental health professionals and rapid police response as the last resort to rescue hostages away from danger. While on terrorist hostage takers, painstaking bargaining on social and political demands is traditionally used. Government negotiators are utilized to the fullest to negotiate and bargain issues with the kidnappers. Barricaded criminals. This type might be robbers cornered by the police while in the act of committing their crime, i.e. bank robbers. Either barricaded in a building, roadblock, or on getaway cars. Hostages are maybe employees, bystanders, or both caught in the process of escaping. The hostage taking is a spontaneous reactions of the criminal when cornered. Some law enforcement officers consider barricaded criminals as attention seekers, but others describe them in the contrary as they avoid being identified. Their primary aim is to escape safely taking with them the hostages as shield to prevent being shot by the police. Usually barricaded criminals are engaged in instrumental acts as they demand for material things such as getaway cars, firearms, money, and safe escape. Barricaded criminals may initiate bargaining negotiation as the police closely monitor them. As earlier presented they might ask a safe conduct pass for the release of the hostages, or they might ask for additional money or getaway car and leave the hostages immediately. The negotiator, upon gathering all the facts and assessment of the situation, including the mental faculties, he may use his own discretion in the negotiation process, whether to grant the demand or not. Prisoners While most prisoners spend most of their time inside the correctional institutions, some are concentrated on penal colonies under tight guards and to those who are completely secluded inside their prison cells, 
they are haunted by boredom, get tired and hostile. These may be due to the strict implementation of house rules, favoritism, and poor prison conditions, lack of recreational activities and inadequate facilities, poor structuring etc. These conditions may largely contribute to the occurrence of riots and crisis hostage taking situations in our correctional institutions. Most probably, the hostages are the prison authorities and staffs or even some of the inmates. For some institutionalized individuals, hostage taking is their means of effecting escape hostages serve as their shield against assault of authorities to stay away from the harsh prison condition. Another group of prisoner hostage takers are those who do not consider escape but a rather total improvement of the conditions and services of the prison institution. Prisoners who initiate hostage taking may be involved on either instrumental or expressive acts or both. Instrumental behavior involves those situationally related, substantive, and objective wants and commonly known as the commodity goal of the hostage taker, Roloff and Jordan, 1992. An example of this is the demand for prison condition as these are the causes of the situation. Additionally the first group almost has similar purpose to the barricaded criminals as they inhibit instrumental acts or behaviors. The negotiation approach in this situation based on the acts involved is bargaining approach. They need to be bargained with at the soonest possible time as the lives of the hostages are in great danger. This is possible, as the hostage taker believes that the hostages are the main cause of the problem. Negotiation models in crisis situations. Whenever a crisis hostage situation is reported to the police or other law enforcement professionals, the initial action being taken is the activation of tactical assault or initial action team and the coordination of trained crisis negotiators within their departments. In cases where the hostage taking is initiated by a perpetrator, purely engaged in expressive acts, the services of a mental health professional trained in crisis management is indispensable. On cases of instrumental behaviors, tactical assault teams are mobilized to contain and isolate the area and on standby when worst come along as the negotiator slash s enter the situation. However, the services of mental health professionals are sought since most of hostage takers with instrumental behaviors are partially engaged in expressive acts. In assessing a crisis situation, one must understand and be able to determine the two kinds of behavior. Firstly, Instrumental behavior refers to actions on the part of the perpetrators and negotiators that facilitate some types of substantive outcome in terms of instrumental issues, situationally related, substantive, and objective wants of each party. Additionally, those who are engaging in this kind of behavior are having goals to obtain or to be fulfilled. Generally, hostage takers of instrumental behavior are criminal types and intervention usually needs bargaining e.g. barricaded criminals, or other organized crime groups. Expressive kind of behavior on the other hand refers to various forms of perpetrators and negotiators behavior that serves to communicate the power or significance of the individual and his slash her emotional state. Simply, it involves the behavior of the perpetrator, Hammer and Rogan. This is characterized by the hostage takers attempt to display power. Those who engage in this kind are mostly emotionally disturbed individuals, e.g. mentally insane, etc. Over the years there are approaches used by negotiators and are devised to suit to these kinds of behavior or acts. Bargaining negotiation approach, earlier discussed were the two types of acts. Bargaining negotiation approach is the model that negotiator employ whenever instrumental issues come a long way. In this approach, negotiation is viewed in terms of an exchange or distribution of resources. This approach is derived to the social exchange theory of Roloff, 1981, which accordingly has two premises. One conflicts involve people who are interdependent which means that each party cannot accomplish each own goals without agreement from each party, and two such conflicts involve rewards and costs from each other. This social exchange theory is obviously focused in the exchange of objects during the negotiation. In order that the negotiation be successful, some authors of crisis management books claim that the communication approach involved the exchange of one set of resources for others or known as bargaining. 
Bargaining is a powerful tool to resolve a conflict provided that the hostage takers focus on instrumental concerns or issues that are negotiable. They are more likely to engage with the hostage negotiator in order to bargain and resolve the crisis. Van Zandt, Rogan, and Hammer reviewed and made critique on this approach and notes, the type of situation law enforcement usually encounter, often fall in several ways to match the requirements of instrumental negotiation approach. First, crisis negotiation situation is not typically like others, more common forms of instrumental dominated bargaining where the assumption is that, the parties come with well thought out proposals and are willing to a bargaining process. Crisis hostage situations involve high levels of anxiety and uncertainty. They are characterized by a pronounced level of emotional excitation precipitated by the hostage takers motives and enhanced police response. Majority of hostage crisis occurs as a result of the mental and emotional inability of the hostage takers to cope with life stressors. This produces a situation where normative rational actor bargaining is generally absent and its place exists an explosive dangerous and volatile set of interaction dynamics where emotional excitation and relationship issues, e.g. control, power, trust, liking, and face, play a critical role. Overall, the particular features of crisis situation discussed above suggest that negotiators often face interaction dynamics that may not fully explained by the instrumentality focused bargaining approach. Expressive negotiation approach, this approach is mainly focused on the emotional state of the hostage taker as a powerful tool to resolving of crisis situation. Expressive negotiation approach came to existence with the use of psychology, human relatons theory and research. Both assume that the nature and quality of interpersonal relationships play a large role in resolving a conflict. The three assumptions of the expressive negotiation model are. One hostage has no instrumental value. This explains that the hostage is a tool or device used in gathering audiences or attracting attention, attention-seeking behavior, to the hostage taker. The hostage taker may initiate a crisis to demonstrate his ability to control others. Two both interact ants have the interest to prevent the escalation of the situation into violence or death. The hostage taker has some minimal level of awareness that when he kill his hostages, he will later suffer the consequences. Three hostage taker and negotiators are confronted with high level of emotional excitation. Increased emotional arousal prepares the perpetrator from reacting with fight or flight response rather than a problem solving mode. In this approach, Negotiators must be knowledgeable on crisis intervention therapy, listening skills as it contributes a lot in decreasing anxiety and a problem solving can emerge later during the negotiation process. Schlossberg, 1979, Van Zandt, Rogan and Hammer, 1998. In addition, relationship development and confidence building strategies are viewed as critical to resolution of crisis hostage incidents. The negotiator must have enough training in listening, paraphrasing, and self-disclosure, open-ended questioning to reduce perpetrator's anxiety. Under intense stress, the Stockholm Syndrome may likely to occur. This phenomenon has been carefully studied and recorded by psychologists. The impact of the incident stress on negotiator's psychological well-being. More so on unsuccessful negotiations. Negotiators should also deserve attention like professional help. Explications of emotional and personality disorders and their impact on crisis negotiation. Most of the hostage situations are committed by paranoids, depressed, antisocial and inadequate personality typologies. Hostage negotiations depends on the psychological characteristics of the hostage taker and the identification of the effective communication strategies when negotiating with perpetrators who exhibit behavioral patterns consistent with specific mental and emotional disorders. This model of negotiation is used to lessen the perpetrator's emotional tension to give way for a rational problem-solving atmosphere. Hammer and Rogan Communication-based negotiation approach this approach is founded on an interactive assessment if the crisis hostage situation as it unfolds and is created through the interaction of the negotiator and the perpetrator. Therefore, communication-based approach is an interactive process wherein negotiators and hostage takers react to each message behavior. In fundamental communications theory, 
communications is composed of content and relational dimensions. Content dimension of communication represents the instrumental focus of person's message, while the latter conveys the expressive features, as trust, power, and respect. There are three interaction concerns relative to the communication-based negotiation approach, which may tend to escalate or de-escalate the conflict. Hammer and Rogan One instrumental concerns, Hammer and Rogan notes, instrumental message behavior arises in crisis negotiation as the hostage takers and the negotiators bargain with one another regarding with the incompatibility of their objective concerns. In this concern, there are two broad types of issues involved, the substantive issues and non-substantive issues or the situationally related and the situationally unrelated respectively. Two relational concerns, relational message behavior denotes when an individual's concern is more on the nature of the relationship to other individual. There are three core elements that represents relational message behavior. Power this concerns the degree of agreement between the two interact ants along a dominance submission dimension. Trust revolve around the degree to which each party is willing to accept the premise that no one shall be hurt or no act shall be detrimental to self. Affiliation refers to belongingness and acceptance between the perpetrator and the negotiator, respect, liking, and caring for the well-being. 3. Identity concerns Identity concerns refers to an individual's concern for self-presentation, reputation or face. These are then important to both parties. According to Tachfell's social identity theory as discussed by Hammer and Rogan, personal and social identities are the two dimensions of a person's self-image and are best to be known by the negotiator when dealing with conflict situation, noted as Personal identity is based on an individual's unique perception of his or her own attributes, the person perceives himself either weak, strong, or intelligent. Hammer and Rogan also suggested that a suicidal's emphasis is on personal identity concerns, and social identity consists of those characteristics and their emotional significance that is attached to one's membership in social groups, nationality, gender, ethnicity, social group slash cult. Rogan and Hammer further discussed that face message behavior varies along three dimensions and the first denotes the locus of a communicator's interest, is the face message directed to one's self or to other, face valence is the second dimension, a behavior either to attack or honor face. Finally, face honoring entails a dimension which relates to whether the message behavior functions to proactively protect against potential future threats to face or to retroactively restore perceived loss of face. When these three dimensions are combined together, there are six types of face message behavior being produced. 1. Defense self's face, this behavior is self-honoring and self-directed messages. More often, the hostage taker uses this when he is asked about the condition of the hostages and replied. I don't know but I think they're all okay. 2. Attack self's face, is a behavior that tends to attack or is directed to oneself. The statement, I know this is all my fault, fits to this behavior. The perpetrator directs criticism or attacks to himself when he fell remorse of his act and this usually occurred during the accommodation stage. 3. Restore self's face, this is used to restore one's face slash reputation. I'm not as crazy as you think, a hostage taker with psychological maladies uses this face message behavior to restore his reputation. 4. Restore others face, a face message behavior that is directed towards the other party. You're such an intelligent guy, or, you've got a lot of people who cares about you, the negotiator tries to restore the perpetrator's face by attempting to gain cooperation and lessen the latter's psychological burden. 5. Defend others face, known as the traditional message behavior utilized to protect others face from future attack or loss. I know you can overcome these odds in your life. The negotiator should defend the perpetrator and not the hostages to increase sense of worth of the perpetrator. 6. Attack others face, this represents the traditional, more limited view of face attack behaviors. These people causes me to do this, when a negotiator shifts the blame to others, it does not really mean that hostages are not prime importance. It is more likely that the hostage taker fell sense of understanding and belongingness. However, if the hostage taker is the one who uses this, 
he is trying to imply that the main cause of the situation are the people involved hostages. The Stockholm Syndrome In the event of hostage crisis, the Stockholm Syndrome will likely to occur. This phenomenon is referred to as the process of transference in which the hostages begin to identify their captors and the following may occur. 1. Positive feelings from the hostages to the captors. 2. Negative feelings toward the authorities by both hostages and captors. 3. Positive feelings returned by the captors to the hostages. This phenomenon got its name after one of the hostages in an aborted bank robbery in Sweden fell in love with the perpetrator, Strance, 1994. In some instances, hostages may even help the perpetrator consummate the crime either by providing cover fire during the escape process or actually joining the heist or become an instant member of the group. Stockholm Syndrome with operates when there is an extended period of time, not being isolated from one's captor and the positive contact between the hostages and the hostage taker, Fuselier, 1981. Variety of issues may possibly cause the occurrence of this phenomenon such as 1. Pity in the case of mentally disturbed individuals, hostages may pity them, as they believe these individuals need professional help. The hostages may offer advises, i.e. not advisable, or even instruct the police not to launch a tactical assault against the defenseless and sick hostage taker. 2. Personal feelings The hostage may feel affection towards the hostage more when the hostage is female, with pleasing personality and cooperative. 3. Indoctrination Barricaded political terrorists tend to indoctrinate their hostages to force them agree and believe with their stand or political ideology. It is not so surprising that a son of a slain scout ranger sergeant in Mindanao joined his Abu Sayyaf captors during the siege in 2000. 4. Poor inaction of the authorities The hostages in the alarm and crisis stages of hostage taking want to be speedily rescued before they will be killed or harmed. In a crisis hostage situation, negotiators consider staling of time the number one rule in dealing with hostage crisis. On scene negotiators stale time to decrease tension among themselves and the hostage taker. This might be misinterpreted by the hostages as they feel neglected. They will end up sympathizing with their captors and uncooperative to their rescuers. It should be corrected that providing assistance to the hostage taker not a conclusion that Stockholm Syndrome has occurred. Hostages may carry the money bag or the clerk opens the vault due to continued threat of the hostage taker. As Stockholm Syndrome continue to develop among the hostages and their captors, the latter will make increase awareness of the safety of the hostages for fear of losing a shield. The negotiators and the hostages however may benefit from this phenomenon since the safety of the hostages is increased. This happens during the accommodation period as hostages may tend to obey every command of their captors and the latter will decrease or lessen the degree of security, I control, can do all and the things introduction through of physical Christ harm among the hostages. Me. I hope you enjoyed. Learned something new about our topic on review notes in criminal sociology, ethics and human relations. Part 8. Hostage Situation. If you learned something in this video, Please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share this video with your friends to also learn about this topic. If you have comments, questions, and suggestions, you can leave a message in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching my videos, hoping that we meet again in my next video, and God bless you always. It is Teacher Luma, the YouTube channel.